Hello and thanks for joining us here on Encore. Coming up on today's show. She's bold, she's sensual and talented. Sharon Stone was in Paris for the French premiere of her documentary, An Undeniable Voice. She spoke to our Eve Jackson. A new museum in Paris has opened to honor the life and times of Swiss surrealist sculptor Alberto Giacometti. It includes a reproduction of his studio apartment in Paris. And a graffiti spotlight is shown on Europe's migrant crisis. The elusive street artist Banksy has peppered the streets of the French capital with his latest works of art. Sharon Stone was one of the most talked about actresses of the 90s, dominating the silver screen in films like Total Recall, Casino and The Unforgettable Basic Instinct. In 2001, a stroke and brain hemorrhage nearly killed her and set back her career. She was in Paris this week to present a documentary that she produced called An Undeniable Voice. It's a story of Sam Harris, a man believed to be the youngest survivor of the Holocaust. Now, Eve Jackson had a chat with Sharon Stone on the red carpet of the film's premiere in France. C'est elle qui m'a fait tomber amoureux du cinéma. Alors, enfant, j'avais ma chambre d'ado, il y avait des, euh, des posters partout d'elle. Féminine, intelligente, du charisme. Quoi. Beautiful, wonderful. Incredible. Les stars de l'âge d'or hollywoodien, cette classe. Une femme qui a un QI supérieur à la moyenne. Je la trouve très lumineuse, bonne actrice, euh, très jolie. One of the most legendary and celebrated stars of her generation, Sharon Stone continues to break boundaries. Of course you're the first to call, Bob. It's the middle of the night. In her last movie, All I Wish, she persuaded the director to give her the main role, written for a 25-year-old. Dating a fetus? Yes, Mom, I'm dating a fetus. It's kind of hard for us to get serious with his mom always tagging along. Don't eat the bread. You can also see her in Steven Soderbergh's murder mystery, Mosaic, a part he wrote just for her. You seem strong. Are you handy? She came to Paris's Grand Rex movie theater to shine a light on her 16-minute Holocaust documentary. The documentary that we've made called An Undeniable Voice is about a man named Sam Harris, who is one of the youngest living survivors of the Holocaust. It's his story. He immigrated to America when he was seven. It tells the story of someone who came from a genocide, who immigrated to another country, uh, my, my country, our country, America, and we just wanted to tell that story because we feel that now is a time for that story to be heard and to understand that history repeats itself. And when we repeat ourselves unfavorably, that is the definition of insanity. And it turns out that three years ago when we set on this journey, we knew it needed to be said. We didn't understand that we would arrive at this moment simultaneously with the unbelievable crisis that we're seeing today. The Nazis came. The Nazis came into that barn and they were yelling, you the heraus, you the heraus, Jews come out. We weren't breathing. We were not breathing. I think that in the 40s, we remembered what was written on the Statue of Liberty. I think that in that period, we were dealing with one genocide. I think now we're dealing with a lot of genocides, and it requires us to stay more and more, increasingly more in touch with our humanity. And it's frightening. It's frightening because when we have to change in any way to be more, to be fuller, to be better, it 
it insists that we let go of who we were before. And everyone is afraid to do that. I'm afraid to do that. We're all afraid to do that. Before I adopted my children, I had a completely different life than I did with three boys raising them on my own. People still treat single mothers a very certain way. And I've learned a lot. And it's not an experience I would exchange for anything else. But I can say, you can't have a different life until you're ready to let go of the life you had before. I was one of the most famous women in the world. Me and Princess Diana, we were so famous. And then I wasn't. But I have a better life now. And I know that until you're willing to let go of that thing that you think is so fantastic, you can't have the next thing. And I know how frightening that is. But we, we must be in touch with our humanity, especially when there are so many people who need us to be able to experience that they need our love and our care. And that these people had real lives, full lives, just like ours, just like ours. These people are not, you know, some people that threw their lives away. Their lives were taken from them. We forget that when we send them from one shore to the next shore to the next shore with nothing, with no food, no clothes, no medicine, no care, no love, no thought. Who are we when we forget that? What went through your head when you saw those images at the America and Mexico border of families being separated from their children and those recent images and being put in detention centers? You know, as much as I don't feel children should be separated from their parents at the Mexican-American border, nor do I think they should be dying on boats or at the shores on every other border around the globe. This is not an American problem. This is a problem in every country in the world. Children are dying in boats and dying on your shores. This isn't an American problem. It's a problem of lacking humanity no matter where you are. Just because ours is ugly doesn't mean yours isn't ugly too. Swiss sculptor Alberto Giacometti was very much a fixture of the 1920s Paris art and literary scene, brushing shoulders with the likes of Picasso, Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir. Well, now a Paris museum has opened to honour the famed surrealist artist and his works. It includes a reconstruction of the studio apartment where Giacometti lived in Paris's Montparnasse neighbourhood. Solange Mougin takes us inside the new museum. A skinny thing of a bronze that's known and loved the world over, Walking Man. Since its creation in 1960, it has, like the other works of Alberto Giacometti, fascinated art lovers. The artist himself, here he is, walking to work to his tiny studio in Paris's Montparnasse. And that very studio has been brought back to life. From the mattress to the cigarette butts, everything here is original. It was all saved by Giacometti's widow. Reconstructed exactly as it was, the studio was essential to the Swiss artist. For 40 years, he worked here. Even when he became rich and famous, Giacometti never traded in the 24-meter squared studio for a larger one, even if he spent long hours in the small space. I work all the time. It's not because I want to. It's because I can't stop. I'm obliged to go to bed at 3 in the morning so I can stand somewhat upright the next day. At the start, when he rented it in 1926, he was a young artist starting out, so it was fitting of his means then. But it became such a personal universe that it gives us the impression that Giacometti could only create there. And it is in that very studio that Giacometti created hundreds of works, some of which haven't seen the light of day in 50 years. Now they will become permanent fixtures at Paris's new museum honoring the artist. The sculptures of painted plaster are thin, fragile, mineral. The artist himself said they reflect his view of humanity. 
I always have the impression or a feeling about the fragility of human beings, as if they must, at every moment, rely on an incredible amount of energy to stay standing from one moment to the next. The Giacometti Institute pays tribute to the artist's love of human fragility, a place where visitors can approach the works and ponder their delicate beauty. Europe's migrant crisis, the May 1968 social protests, and Minnie Mouse. You might be wondering what these three things have in common, and the answer is Banksy. New graffiti works have been popping up all over the streets of Paris, and after much speculation, we can confirm that Banksy, the elusive British artist, is indeed behind these artworks. He posted several photos on his verified Instagram account, like this trademark rat, which usually represents the everyday worker. It's a reference to France's mass social protests 50 years ago. The rat, though, has taken the eight from 1968 to form the ears of Minnie Mouse. There were also references to Europe's migrant crisis with this mural of a young girl trying to make her street home cozy. This in a neighborhood where a makeshift refugee camp was recently evacuated. You have to understand that Banksy is an anarchist through and through. He's an old Bristol graffiti artist, so we can imagine that for him coming to commemorate May 68 with all that it entails in terms of social upheaval made sense. And then we've got this little rat with his mini mouses. Banksy likes to play with these cultural codes and especially with American imperialism. Well, we'll leave you with those images of Banksy's work spotted around the French capital. Remember our website, france24.com. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.